Well, good evening. Uh, my name is Steve Sidaway. I'm the Parks and Recreation Director. I'm here to, tonight to tell you about new parks in South Meridian that are coming to you. So, oh, here we are. Okay. So you have seen this site. Again, this is uh, where the school is. And uh, we are going to be constructing a 10-acre park on the site west of here. We are on track, on schedule, and, and moving forward. I think that's probably what uh, many of you want to hear about and, and know tonight. Uh, so it is a 10-acre site, like I said, with uh, a loop pathway. Um, and then I'm going to zoom in on some of the, the main amenities are in this area here. So this is zooming in on that area. Um, we'll be <coughs> constructing a, uh, a large playground. Uh, we'll be theming that playground with the agricultural history of the site. And I'll show you some, some visuals of that here in just a minute. Um, but we have some small picnic shelters, uh, restrooms, bike racks, a small spray pad that won't be open during school <laughs> hours. But during the summer, uh, I'll show you a picture of that. And then the large picnic shelter. And part of the partnership is that the Y uh, provides the, the parking for the, the park which is a great benefit. So here are some of the amenities coming to the park here at Hillsdale. We've got these uh, water wickets that are called as a part of the splash pad. We've got a custom playground uh, with kind of the, the tractor and, and barn theme to them. And we'll have the restroom, some engraved boulders with uh, uh, celebrating some of the crops that have been grown uh, not on this site specifically and throughout Meridian with this agricultural history the shelters, outdoor exercise stations, and uh, some pretty cool hay bale benches that'll work both as benches and also reinforce that, that theme. What most people want to know is when. So we are in design development right now. You can see the designs coming along nicely. Uh, we hope we need to complete our design work and go into construction documents this fall. We plan to bid uh, this park in December of this year and break ground uh, next spring. So, coming soon. Uh, the next park I just want to tell you about briefly is about another year uh, out beyond that, but we've got a large uh, regional park coming to South Meridian. Uh, as we've talked to South Meridian, Meridian residents, one of the things we've heard is, uh, you know, we don't have a settler's park or a Kleiner park or one of those big parks. You do have, in terms of acres per thousand, the same number of, uh, of park acres as North Meridian does, but you don't have that, that iconic uh, large regional park. And we've got a 77 acre park site about a mile from here uh, to the south, uh, southwest, because uh, we're currently sitting about up here uh, in this location and our park site is uh, on the south side of Lake Hazel between Locust Grove and Eagle Road. Uh, this design is still coming together. It's very much in, in uh, concept, uh, but we are not going to build the entire 77 acres at once. Even Settlers Park was built in many phases. Uh, but over, the, over 15 years, yeah, we started around 2000, 2001, and we just completed the, the tennis facilities there just this past year, so 15 years in the making is what Settlers Park has been. I think of this as South Meridian's Settlers Park, uh, but we are looking at a, uh, a softball field complex, we've got concessions and restrooms, uh, maintenance, large picnic shelters, a big destination playground, uh, we'll have a splash pad, open play areas, uh, probably some tennis and pickleball, uh, off-leash dog areas, and then passive use areas for trails, ponds, picnicking, things like that. So a uh, great new big park coming to you, and what's our timeline on that? So we're still in the concept planning stage for this one. Uh, we're basically about a, a year further out for the bidding, but we hope that uh, in December of 2017, that we will be putting the first phase of this uh, regional park project out to bid and breaking ground on it in spring of 2018. So there's two exciting new uh, uh, park projects coming to South Meridian. 
One right here in the backyard of this facility and one about a mile away as, as a regional park. So uh, that is my presentation. Mike is standing in the back. Mike, would you raise your hand? Um, if you have questions about either of these parks when we're done, we have boards in the back with all of this information that we just showed. And we would, Mike is uh, with the Parks Department as the Park Superintendent and the Project Manager for both of these. We'd be glad to meet with you and help answer any questions. At this point, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Caleb Hood from the Planning Department. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Caleb Hood. I work for the City of Meridian in the Community Development Department. What I'm going to talk to you about this evening isn't quite as exciting as parks or YMCA's or even libraries, not to pick on the library, but um, we are going to talk about, as the mayor said in her intro, um, doing the listening tour this last year, she heard about infrastructure. And so this evening what we'd like to do is dig a little bit deeper into that and kind of figure out what type of infrastructure uh, the residents in South Meridian are, are looking for. So we have some folks that are handing out the, what they call audience response systems, I'll probably say ARS, um, but they're clickers and you can vote on things. So we have a, a slide presentation. I was hoping maybe the visual is going to be a little bit bigger. So I will read these so to make sure that everybody can uh, understand the questions before you vote. There are also papers that were on your chair. So hopefully everybody got a set. There's a, a set of maps and then the questions. Um, for some of these questions, they, they get pretty complex. And so I would encourage you, if you don't have a pen or a pencil on some of these, you might want to jot down your order before you enter it into the system because there's no clear button or start over or anything like that. So, And we may be short on clickers too. We only have 50 of them. Um, so you might have to share. Uh, couples might have to share one. Um, the scouts may have to give one up if, if there's a couple of folks that still need them. So will you raise your hand? Ken still got a, a handful of them. Now we, maybe we can get everybody that, that needs one here. Um, Please remember to return those at the end of the, this evening. Either leave them on your chair, put them on the table, but please don't walk out the door with them. Um, so I'm going to give you a crash course because we're supposed to be out of here at 8 o'clock and i got about 15 questions we want to ask in 9 minutes, so that's darn near impossible, but we're going we're gonna to try. So this is pretty intuitive. Uh, you'll see on your clicker, I have an extra one here by the way if we still need any more. You'll see on the clicker, uh, it's, it's like an old-fashioned phone dial. I mean, one A doesn't uh, have all the, the letters of the alphabet, but all the questions you'll see will actually have uh, uh, correspond to the, the letters on here. So you'll hopefully see the A, B, C. And again, I'll read them because some of them get a little small, but you also have corresponding maps there. Um, so we'll ask you to vote. We'll open up the voting. I'll probably do some type of a countdown, and, and that'll be a 10-second warning or whatever to get your vote in. Uh, for the question at hand. Um, from, yeah, I can I can uh, give this one up if we're short any. You need one back there? Um, we, there are some multiple choice questions, as I mentioned. Uh, you're going to select all that apply. You simply just push the button. You can know if it's registering or not. Right now it won't register because we, ha we haven't activated it, but it'll turn green in the top left-hand corner. There'll be a green light that, that turns on and you can know that it's it's being collected, the data is being collected. Um, so, let's give it, let's give it a try, right, Christina? And I do want to thank Christina and Compass for allowing us, the Community Planning Association of Southwest Idaho, um, they let us borrow these, these clickers and helped us set up the presentation. So, thank you, Christina. Um, so this is just a fun question, just to kind of get you oriented a little bit. And the question is, what is your favorite flavor of ice cream? Uh, a is chocolate, B is vanilla, C is strawberry, D is other. So you only get to choose one of these. This isn't a multiple choice. You're not going to choose all of them. Neapolitan is not one of the answers there, but you could, D would be other. And it's the last one. So if you said chocolate and you're like, oh, I didn't realize strawberry was an option, you can press C and it'll record the last button you push. So let's go ahead and again, we'll try to get through this quickly. So go ahead and, and everyone push your, your buttons. We should have somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 because we've got 50 clickers, right? 49. So I got 43, 47. Anyone else? Going once, 48. Going twice, and we're going to close the voting. So we got 48 responses out of 49. Chocolate seems to be the winner here. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of go through this. Um, here's another question, just again, just to get you comfortable with this. Here's one that's a little bit more complex. 
So which flavors do you think are most popular? And we're going to ask you to rank these. So the first button you push is the most popular, and the last one you push is the least popular. So again, you don't have to use your pen or pencil now, but you may want to. It's just practice. But um, A, or, or number, the first one you push is your most important, and the fourth one you push is um, least popular. So we're going to, again, we're at 44, 47. Going once, going twice, there's 49, all right. So everybody's voted? Okay. All right, now we're getting serious. So we got about 12 real questions that we'd like to ask now. Um, I will, again, read them because they're a little, little bit difficult to see. So again, during the mayor's listening tour, many people ask for additional infrastructure improvements. In general, what type of infrastructure improvements would you most like to see? So again, before you start pushing the clickers, you gotta select your answers in order of importance to you. And there's no going back on this one. It's once you press, whatever you're gonna press is one, that's your, that's your most important. So um, A is roadway widening. B is intersection improvements, such as widening, turn lanes. Uh, C is pathways or sidewalk connections on local streets. D is sidewalks on arterial or major roadways. E is street lights, and F is other. So A is roads, B is intersections, C is pathways and sidewalks on local streets, D is sidewalks on arterials, E street lights, F other. We got 48. Wait for one more person, and we'll give I'll give 10 seconds because this actually starts counting when you press your first button. So I'll give a few more seconds to go ahead and finish up your voting. I'm seeing a lot of eyeballs. So five, four. Three, two, one. And roadways, okay. Next question. Where do you or would you go if traveling there were safer and more efficient? A is Mountain View High School or Majestic Cinemas area, so Overland Road area. B is Meridian Overland Intersection, Roaring Springs and Jackson's area. C is Stoddard Road, so Victory Middle School, Bear Creek Park, uh, Walmart, Lowe's, that area. D is Eagle Victory Intersection area, where that new Rite Aid is uh, going. E is Meridian Victory Intersection, so the feed store, the professional offices there. Uh, F is the Eagle Overland Intersection, uh, so where we're at. Um, and then G is 10 Mile Overland Intersection, so there's a parking right lot there. And this one is not ranking, just if you think you'd go there, if there were better connections or if it was safer, go ahead and select it. This one isn't in priority order, just trying to figure out in general where people would like to go. So 33, 35, there's about 10 more seconds, 10, 15 seconds. Where would you like to go if it were more safe and efficient? 45, I'll get 5 seconds. And we're going to close the polling. All right. We will make this information, by the way, available on our website, so you can look at the results. We're not going to spend a whole bunch of time going through those results, and we'll also share them with the mayor and city council and the uh, Party and Transportation Commission. So the next question is, yes, Lori. Yeah, I don't, that's why I didn't almost write it off of my slide. I realized that's not yeah, the corresponding right. This yep. So that's why hopefully everyone voted on the Eagle Overland intersection, not parenthetically what was uh, listed there. Sorry about that. I just noticed that myself. I didn't read it. So, um, so infrastructure projects tend to be expensive. Which would you rather see? And you're going to choose one of these. Temporary improvements made immediate, more immediately, or ultimate improvements made over time. An example would be a pathway scabbed onto the roadway versus waiting to get the ultimate curb gutter and sidewalk and concrete next to the roadway. So that's just one example. But interim improvements made more immediately or ultimate improvements made over time. Looks like most of you have voted. So five, four, I'll go ahead and close it. Thank you. 
And the next question is the city budgets funds to construct amenities such as parks, pathways, and lighting along roadways. These projects add to the quality of life and safety of pedestrians. If the city could only do one type of project, which would you rather see? So again, you get to choose one of these. You can change your mind, but when we, the last button you push is the one that it's going to uh, choose. So if the city could only do one type of project, which would you rather see? A, more parks, B, more pathways, C, more roadway lighting, D, none of the above. A, parks, B, pathways, C, roadway lighting, D, none of the above. Couple more. Going once, going twice, and then close it. Okay. Uh, the city relies on the Ada County Highway District to acquire necessary lands to build infrastructure as well as design and construct roadway, intersection, and sidewalk projects. In general, in South Meridian, which would you rather see ACHD invest in? And the options are, and again, we're going to choose one of these, roadway widening, intersection improvements, or sidewalk projects? A, roadway widening, B, intersection improvements, C, sidewalk projects. In South Meridian, which would you rather see ACHD invest in? A few more. Going once, twice. Right. Can Thank you. you. Read those. Oh, sorry. So uh, roadway widening was sixty percent on that one. Sidewalks were twenty-eight percent, and intersection improvements were thirteen percent. I can do that. Just can over here is eight or more. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so ACC plans to build more roundabouts in South Meridian. Would you like to see more roundabouts in South Meridian? So again, you get to choose one. A, yes, B, no, C, maybe. Can you tell me like, what the benefits of a roundabout are versus like, a traditional I can real, give you the real quick, um, from an engineering perspective, so it does take up a little more right away, so there's a con, it takes up a little more bigger footprint. The pro is it can move traffic more efficiently. You don't have to stop at a stoplight like you would, and you can keep cars moving. The other, benefit, the other major benefit is a safety one. The, the crashes you have aren't T-bone, you're either on the side or rear end crashes, so they're less severe when you have an accident or a crash at a roundabout. It's not a head-on crash, it's a, either side impact or rear. So that's the elevator version of that answer. Uh, so more roundabouts in South Meridian. A, yes, B, no, C, maybe. A, yes, for roundabouts, B, for no, C, I don't know, or maybe. One or two more. Going once, twice. Okay, 62% for yes and 23 no and 15 maybe. So the next question is related. Have you had a positive experience using the roundabout at Eagle and Amity? And again, you get to choose one. A is yes, B is no, C is don't know. So the existing single lane roundabout at Eagle and Amity. Positive experience, A for yes, B for no. So 79% yes and 21% no. Next question, which road widening projects in South Meridian do you think are most important? So this is where we're going to look at our maps that were also a handout on your chair. So hopefully, I know the lights are, are dimmed, but hopefully you can kind of uh, make those out. If not, maybe we can turn the, the lights on in the back so people can, can see the maps. Um, so again, this one you're going to rank. The next several, actually, we're going to ask you to rank. So I would encourage you, if you have a pen or a pencil, maybe to jot it down on the paper or on the map before you actually vote, because there's no going back. Once you select your first answer, you're selecting the rest of the series. So the question is, which road widening projects in South Meridian do you think are most important? And again, we're starting with your first answer is the most important, and your last answer, or, or the, the, the tenth button, I guess, ninth button you push, um, eighth button you push is going to be your, your least important. So road widening projects, most important. We'll give a little bit longer time on this one.
Does everyone have a map or access to a map? About 15 seconds, I've seen a lot of eyeballs. Get him in, all right. It looks like uh, Eagle, Victory to Amity was the, the number one answer. Um, Locust Grove, Victory to Amity, number two, and then tied for three and four were Locust Grove, Overland to Victory, and Victory, Locust Grove to Eagle. These are the top few anyways for roadway widening. Now real similar, the next question, real similar for intersections. So it's the same question, just about intersections now. Which intersections South Meridian are most important? Um, A, Amity Eagle. B, Victory Locust Grove, C, Amity Locust Grove, D, Amity Meridian, E, Victory Linder, F, Amity Linder, G, Victory 10 Miles. So again, these correspond, the letters correspond to the map too, um, for ease of answering on your ARS keypad. Intersection project importance. about 15 seconds though. All right, everybody done? It's off the chart. Victory, Locust Grove, looks like it's number one. I can't even read the percentage. Um, like that one is the number one intersection, followed by uh, the Amity Eagle intersection and Amity Locust Grove, 17% each. And again, we'll put these up here in the next um, couple days on the city's website for you to, to look at them if you're curious about what the answers were. Or, yeah. uh, so we're, we're about done here. There are gaps in sidewalk network. So this one's a little bit different. And, and again, the map's going to be very helpful, again, just to orient you. What we've got on the map is it shows where those gaps or the, the lacking infrastructure in the sidewalk ne network exists. So if you look at map number three and think about the sidewalk gaps that are in there, which ones do you think are the most important to fill in? And they generally go from one arterial to the next, so a mile of sidewalk for most of these. So the order of importance, A is Meridian Overland to Harris. It's a little bit more than a mile, about a mile and a half. B, Victory, Meridian to Locust Grove. C is Locust Grove, Overland to Victory. D is Locust Grove, Victory to Amity. E is Victory, Locust Grove to Eagle. F, Amity, Mary, McPhils Mary McPherson Elementary to Locust Grove. G, Eagle Road, to Vic Eagle Road, Victory to Amity. H, Amity, Locust Grove to Eagle. I, Amity, Eagle to Howery. J, Eagle, Amity to Taconic. Any 
you don't have to select all of them. If you only want to select three or four or five or whatever, you can be done. You don't have to rank them all, but. Um, Okay, about 10 seconds. Let's see, that one's a little harder to read. It looks like Locust Grove Victory to Amity has 13% of the vote. And then Eagle Victory to Amity at 12. Amity Locust Grove to Eagle at 11. Eagle Amity to Conic at 11 and Locust Grove Overland to Victory at 11. So pretty evenly dispersed there. Uh, looks like the State Highway or Meridian Road um, wasn't a very high priority there. Okay, so real similar question with pathway projects in South Meridian. And again, the map is gonna be very helpful, uh, particularly in this one because a lot of them follow either the pipeline, uh, canals, uh, waterways, um, and those are called out on your map. So for pathway projects in South Meridian, which ones would be the most important for you. And again, you don't have to select them all, but it is a ranking. So your first one, highest priority for you. A, over Linda Litter, Linder along the pipeline corridor. B, Linder to Meridian along the pipeline corridor. C, the Linder Stoddard Victory corridor along the Reidenbaugh. Uh, D, Meridian to Locust Grove along the Reidenbaugh. Uh, Meridian to Locust Grove, uh, that's a 10 mile creek. F, over Linda Victory along the Reidenbaugh Canal. G, Victory to Locust Grove along the Reidenbaugh. H is Locust Grove to Amity along 10 Mile Creek. And I is Overland to Cloverdale along the Five Mile Creek. seconds then. Try to wrap up. Okay, we're closing the polling. Uh, boy, pretty even there amongst uh, a lot of those metal pathway segments. No one going above 16%. Looks like uh, Locust Grove to Amity along Ten Mile Creek was, was the highest, but not by much. Okay. Street lighting projects. This one's pretty easy. Uh, there are only three to choose from. This is map number five in the packet. So street lighting would be this, the street lights that help both motorists and pedestrians. Overhead lighting on the street um, helps with visibility and safety. So which one would, which do you think are most important? A, Eagle Overland to Victory, B, Locust Grove Overland to Victory, or C, Overland Locust Grove to Eagle. Eagle over Linda Victory is A. Locust Grove over Linda Victory is B. C is over Linda Locust Grove to Eagle. Looks like about everybody's got an answer. Let's go five seconds. Okay. Locust Grove over Linda Victory. That's a pretty easy. Eagle Overland to Victory, right there. Okay. So as you all know, South Meridian is growing rapidly. Infrastructure services and jobs are all interrelated. So this is a tough one here. Rank which elements you would like to see more of in this in South Meridian. Uh, a is schools. So again, this is this is a rank. So the first one you push is, is your highest priority. A schools. B libraries. C grocery stores. D shopping, retail, or other commercial opportunities. E jobs. F, housing options, G, fire, police stations or substations, H, parks, A, schools, B, libraries, C, grocery stores, D, shopping, retail, commercial, E, jobs, F, housing options, G, fire, police stations, H, parks.
everybody done. We've got a few more seconds anyways. I see some people still working. Oh, all right. So it looks like grocery store is, a, is the top ranking answer. Parks would be right there. Or parks and schools are right there at 16 and 15 percent. Uh, libraries and shopping, 13 percent. Um, so just real quickly, we were going to go ahead and tally some of the past um, answers and give you kind of the final overall roadway or intersection, what got the most votes. But again, I'm going to put that in just in the interest of time. I'm going to put that on the website, so you have to come back. Uh, give me a couple days anyway, so if you, uh, if you don't see it by Friday morning anyways, uh, contact me, but we'll have it up by Friday. Um, we'll have the answers from all these questions and then a tally of the top five or six projects overall. So roadways and intersections competing against sidewalks and things. I did before um, I turn this back over, uh, want to just hand out another, one more map, we'll kill you with paper. This is a map that shows the city's priorities list as of today, so 2016. What we're going to do with, as far as roadway projects go, roadways and intersections. So annually the city puts together a list and sends it to ACHD for consideration in their budget process. Um, I want you to see what inputs we've received to date to the Transportation Commission and the Mayor and City Council and the output of that being our priority list. So I'm going to make that a handout um, so you can look at it. Um, just a little quick orientation on this map. LOS stands for Level of Service. Think of it since we're in a grade school, it's perfect. It's a report card. A is the road is free flowing. I can go there. There's hardly any other traffic. F, it's failing. It's bumper to bumper. It takes me four cycles to get through a signal or, or whatever. So that's kind of the, the scale here on the level of service. So again, A is, A is the road or the intersection is doing good. F it is its failing. Um, so I just want you to have... Um, that information as well. So I'm going to flip to the last one. So I think with that, thank you for uh, your participation tonight and uh, helping us out with that. Uh, well, thank you all for sticking with us and being part of this. Um, we've given a lot of information. We're sticking around afterwards to listen to your questions. Uh, we have uh, certainly our parks department, we have our city clerk, CJ, you want to wave? Um, we have our police chief back there, our deputy chief of police. We had our fire chief here. Um, if you have a question, we'll find someone that can help you with the answer, and if not, we'll follow up with you. Public Works, Kyle Raddick. Um, he also works with our water infrastructure. So um, thank you again for your time. Thank you for being a planner tonight and helping us with your feedback. Uh, we're excited with what's happening in South Meridian. We hope after listening to some of the information we shared that you're just as excited as well. So thank you for being here. <laughs>